Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here's the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky from www.thelandgeek.com, your favorite niche real estate land flipping website. And today, you, you've been missing him. I've been missing him. Back from a big road trip, I think, which we're uh, very excited to hear about. Duran Frazier, ReserveLand.com, LandHub.com. What's up? What's up? Everybody just settle down. Um, as, as excited as Mark is, the truth is that Mark has been taking medication to get him more upbeat um, and more excited about me being on the show. Um, no, I'm, I'm uh, man, I had, a, I had a long week, uh, which included a little bit of injuries and a little bit of travel. Wait, so, where, now you went up to Elko? Went up to Elko and Battle Mountain, correct. So what's going on? The minerals? Yeah, working on the mining project, um, just finalizing uh, a portion of some of the leases, and uh, which will sort of catapult us into, which we've talked about in the last few weeks, but catapult us into a uh, our first round of financing, which we hope to close in about six weeks. So Fantastic. Hey, you know about that uh, Clive Bundy, right? Of course. Yeah. So he's, what my, you, he's my uncle. He, yeah, uncle. Uncle Bundy. Uncle Bundy. Uncle Clive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so... so this guy, in case you don't know, he made national news. He, for years, for years, refused to pay BLM, the Bureau of Land Management, to use uh, their federal land for his cows to graze on for the, the land lease, right? Mm -hmm. So the federal government, in all their wisdom, wanted their money. And they came and they had like this crazy standoff and it got violent and, you know, the government didn't want to have another Waco, so they they went off. But the guy was breaking the law, correct? And then he went on and said some racist things, which really didn't help anyone at all. So, but, you know, what's interesting is uh, for years and years, I used to get money on land leases for from... Uh, from a couple of ranchers out there to let their cows graze. Yeah. You know, what's funny, Mark, is that, uh, you know, if this wasn't recorded, I'd probably say a little bit more than I should say. Um, I've done a little bit of research. I, I, there's some, there's some, uh, what's the term I'd like to use? Um, uh, how about closeness? I know, I know a little bit more involved in what's going on with this whole Clive Bundy situation um, because it's more of a state issue. There's some senators involved. There's some senators' children involved. Um, it kind of comes down to um, what I believe to be um, uh, the, that the picture is painted a little differently in the media than what's really truly happening. Um, <clears throat> after researching some stuff, as you know, may know, I'm, I'm kind of involved in the solar industry a little bit, so I know a little bit of what's going on on a, on a different side. But but there was some ground that Rory, uh, Rory Reed was involved with in, in, in Southern Nevada. Wait, who, who's Rory Reed? That's the son of Harry Reed. Oh, okay. Um, and it was basically the, the BLM, I think, was selling some property. I don't know the, the, I don't know the um, exact specifics of, the pro of, of what happened, but long story short is they sold the property for like 20 cents a dollar. And of course, Rory Reed got, you know, first right of refusal or however it worked. Um, but w what I've heard is that Harry Reed and Rory Reed were working together on basically getting um, the rights to some of this BLM land for a large solar project. Okay. And so the reason why they went after Clive is because if there, if there was any reason, so if there's any Clive's, Clive's 500 or a thousand cattle, we're, we're grazing on land within this specific area, right. uh, which could have potentially been a problem if they're putting solar panels. So, so the reasoning, if you look up, if you type in like Rory Reed and, and Clive Bundy, you'll see, um, of course, Rory Reed got on, 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 uh, you know, mainstream media and discussed the fact that he had nothing to do with it. But, but you know, it, you know, it's cronyism at its at, at its finest. And we don't want to talk politics, but there there's a little bit more than meets the eye. 
and it's a little bit of sad of a sad situation for the for the Clive Bundy ranchers and that kind of stuff. But but um, anyway, so I, I I did a lot of research into what's going on. There's still a bunch of militiamen down there, which is really interesting. Oh, it's crazy! It's so, crazy. So. All right, all right. Well, I think as far as our listeners are concerned about making money with raw land. Um, what do you think of the idea of actually going after these, you know, these land leases and working with these ranchers that, you know, you go after the the parcels where, you know, maybe the ranchers having some some issues, they can't afford the property more, they can't afford the property taxes, but they sure wouldn't mind paying on on a grazing lease. Um, you know what? I, do you want my honest opinion? Or do you want me to? No give, lie. No lie. Okay. I'm going to lie. That's a great idea, Mark. <laughs> it's, a, it's a terrible idea. <laughs> terrible idea. Okay. Uh, grazing leases what? don't pay a whole lot of money, Mark. In fact, the grazing lease will pay about a dollar per acre per year. Okay. Uh, grazing is, go ahead. All right. All right. You're right. A dollar per acre per year. Correct. That's terrible. You're right, and you and I'm surprised for a guy who's been getting paid land leases over the years. I'm surprised you didn't know that. Um, well, it's been it's been several years, and I just remember, you know, I'd get like a thousand dollars. Wow, that's a nice check. I haven't got one of those before from a rancher. And I, and I've, leased a, I've leased a lot of ground that have turned into payments that never showed up. But the the interesting part is, and you know, it kind of brings brings me into a topic that we haven't discussed before, which is which is ag agricultural deferment, and especially in a state like Nevada. When you have a, a lease in place on a property, um, generally you you will negotiate a deal with a rancher. The rancher will pay you a uh, negotiated rate to utilize your property um, at, and lease it for grazing rights now, or for for a grazing lease, so their cattle can you know walk on your land and eat eat whatever's there. Um, generally speaking, it's not a ton of money. It's about a dollar an acre, and from what I found, that's pretty standard. Um, and I may, may be wrong, but um, it's a lease that's that's basically can be nullified at any point in the contract. But your your the benefit is it reduces your your yearly taxes. So push right. you put you into agricultural deferment status. So the the good news is you have a cheaper property taxes. The bad news is you have cows grazing your land, which isn't a big deal, and you get a small check every year. So. It's kind of a win-win, um, and if you don't get your check, it's still a win-win because you get less um, you get less property taxes on your property in ag deferment. Yeah, yeah. Um, ag deferment's great if you can get it. Yeah, it's it's great. But when we did our deal, we had to pay seven years back taxes, correct, to get it out of agricultural deferment. It wasn't cheap to get out. You had to take it out of agricultural deferment. When you when we cut it up, when we subdivided it, correct, correct. So that's but, it, but, uh, still, but still the numbers made sense even after it, it was. We're not talking about a whole lot of money here. Yeah, was, I mean, Mark, when your margins are a thousand percent, it's really, really, really um, hard to find anything that's going to going to get in there and cause a big problem. Yeah, that's that's true. That's so, true. All right, let's talk about speed. Money loves speed. You know what I mean? By that, uh, if you're if you're not talking about the drug, no. I'm not talking about the drug. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about whenever you get some type of idea, a deal, not to wait on it, not to let things go, right? Don't wait for the perfect time to do anything when it comes to opportunity. So I'll give you an example. You get your your accepted purchase agreement back in the mail, right? And you take your time getting back to the seller you wait maybe a day or two before you hand that off to your VA start doing your due diligence creating your maps what should you do Duran well first off Mark you know it, it just reminded me of a time when we were on a podcast and you said I don't check my emails throughout the day I do it once a day and I said Mark but these people that's, need that's time management no, that's time management. It's speed, baby. It's speed. Okay, so let me let me just. And email's not going to make me any money. There's no opportunities in email. That's but simply what? that's simply time wasting communication. What if it's a lead? What do you mean? What if it's a lead? What if it's a lead? What what what? If you went. All in right, the, fine. In, you know what? In, you're in you're the, right. Fine, fine, fine. I'm gonna fine. I'm gonna ruin my productivity for my whole day. 
like a slot machine waiting, checking email every three seconds, like a like a ferret on a double cappuccino, no attention span, just in case there's a lead. Did I say every two minutes? You said check your email. There's, my emails are going off all the time. I check my I check my emails probably six times, five six times a day, and I and if there's a lead, it takes precedence, Mark. Five or six times a day. That, I guarantee you you spend every five minutes checking your email. I don't. And you know what else I did on my cell phone? I actually have to forcibly check my email. So I have to slide down on Gmail and let it run its cycle because it doesn't automate. So so I do it because then I don't have to check it every two minutes. I'll check it every half hour or an hour or four hours depending on my meetings. Like today, I had meetings from you know 12 o'clock to you know right now it's 4 o'clock. I had meetings, and so in the meetings, I checked it one time. Okay, well, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna rephrase then. Okay. Because money loves speed, money loves opportunity, right? I don't consider checking email, and you know, that type of activity productive at all. No one's ever made a dollar checking email. You should was, run. You should run for Congress, bro. I'm you know going that? to. My <laughs> my point, my point is that this is it, right? is that when an opportunity hits, don't wait on it. You get a purchase agreement in, call that back that seller, let them know what the closing process is and that you're gonna close quickly. Money loves speed. You get that deal in, right? Process it quickly. Get it up on Craigslist. Start advertising it right away. Don't wait. That's what I mean by money loves speed. You get a great marketing idea, test it immediately, implement it immediately. Don't let it wait. In fact, okay. yeah, that, that's what I mean. Okay, fair you enough. Know, you, fair enough. You, you, you read a good headline. You're reading a, a, you know, a real estate blog, a real estate article, and you like the headline. Take that headline and test it immediately. Don't wait on things is what, I, is what I'm saying. Yeah. So you disagree? No, I agree. Okay. So I give, agree. So give me, give me an example that where you've used that because I know you're quick. With things I am it's funny because I, I don't know if there's anybody on the planet faster than me at response time um, I am I'm, I'm I tried to go by mark had a system where I kind of wanted to go by hey look let's check my emails in the morning at 8 a.m. respond to them and then get back to them either in the afternoon later in the afternoon or the next day and I thought well the, the, the dynamic for me is I'm so fast at typing although I'm not right now because I have a broken left pinky um, I'm so fast at responding that that I prefer to just have the check the box five or six times a day, get back to my emails, and then and that's just my cycle. So it, what, each person is different, right? I mean, it, I just like the way I operate, and it does. It's not a detriment to the way I do business. I still stay focused. I still I still stay on task. But like Mark said, it is speed is everything, right? I get people. Uh, you know, like, like in the car business, they talk about a lead being hot. Like when someone's ready to buy a car, when someone's ready to buy a piece of land, you got to get back to them because the emotional aspect of the buyer is they're ready to commit. Right. And com commitment is 99.9% .9 of the equation. And when they're ready to commit, it's, it's a great time to capture that lead. When they're the, the longer the time goes, the commitment goes away. So, right. right. See, and same thing with selling, same thing with selling. Yeah. You know, who you got? You got to hit people when they're hot. So, what I see a lot happen with, uh, and I and I was like this was, I would kind of be, I would kind of have the attitude, I'll get to it. I'd have an idea, and I might write it down, like you know, a different marketing channel or a different way of uh, handling, uh, you know, the process of closing. Like, you know, something that might might make me more efficient. But it wasn't in my headspace right away. It wasn't in the forefront of what I was doing. So I would just kind of like forget about it. Like that's what I find in myself is that if I don't implement things right away, they don't get done. And if I push it off to a, uh, an employee or a virtual assistant and I don't give them a 24-hour deadline, they forget about it. What's your experience with that? I, I'm I, I'm in, I completely agree with you. I mean, my experience is the same thing. I mean, I you know, communication is key in every right, aspect, right. and and 
and the faster the communication, the better. So I'm, uh, I'm, re I'm right there with you, Mark. All right. Great. Great. So what else is going on with you in, in your deals? Uh, well, I'm right now. I'm, one of my deals is trying to figure out if I can bend my left pinky. So, <laughs> so that's a, That's a special deal for me. Um, I was in, I was in Nevada all of last week. I was, um, I was picking up some property, looking at some mining stuff, a uh, little bit of everything last week. I took my poor wife and kids. I took my wife with me and my, my kids, you know, anytime you put two kids that are super creative, like their daddy in an RV for, uh, <laughs> for five days straight and you cover 2000 miles, there's going to be some issues. Um, it was only like two black eyes. Um, my poor dog. Oh no. Oh man. I tell you, it was a lot of, it was, it was fun though. We went from Pismo beach, um, in, in, in like central Cal up to, to Tahoe and Tahoe was a super late. I mean, you don't get very many May snows and it snowed. And, and then we went over to, uh, Reno for a couple of days out to, um, battle mountain and Elko area. And then we drove home from straight from battle mountain in one day, which was awesome. So in all in the RV and my poor wife was like, I don't know what I was thinking. And I said, I know what you were thinking. You wanted to be with your awesome husband. <laughs> six days straight. So that six was fun. Days. Um, uh, you know, interesting, you know, I, 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 again, one of the funny things that I, every time I go to an auction or, or a place and buy land, I learn new things and I learned something new this week that just, you know, little, little things that land can do for you. And one of them was a, a guy that bought a piece of land that I was trying to acquire. Um, he, he bought it for the same reason I did, but he had a different purpose. So I bought this piece of land because it was on the freeway on the Interstate 80. And Interstate 80 in Northern Nevada is the corridor. It's tons of traffic. Um, there was a 35 acre parcel right on the highway. And wow. I, I wanted it for one reason to advertise my property and others. Right, right. And Land Hub. And so this guy, I, I asked him at the end of the, at the, end of the auction, what, why did you uh, buy the property? And he said, because I'm putting up a billboard. <laughs> but how, how, how much did he outbid you at? Uh, it was absurd. He paid a lot of money for the property. I just kept my card up until until I decided it wasn't no longer worth it for me. Right. Um, and he wasn't that. He could have had it for a thousand bucks for thirty five acres, but uh, it was a good deal. But he, I just made him pay for it. Um, sure. So long story short, is he, but he wasn't. He, his business wasn't to put a billboard up. His business was to market his RV park and his mobile home park. And no so, kidding. So in reality, his mindset was exactly what my mindset was was not to market this specific property, but to market something else. Right. So it's another, it's another, it, it, it gave me the idea again that how valuable land is because if your land is in the middle of nowhere, you know, you know, and no one's driving by it, well, then you can't really use it for everything. But if you're buying land and it's on a thoroughfare and there's nothing being done with the property, you could probably lease it to somebody for advertising, but you've got to be careful because there's billboard rules. He has to keep permit to put a billboard up. But for me, for Land Hub, if it's listed on Land Hub, I can put, I can put a property sign up. So, so it's it's gonna it's gonna be a really intriguing situation for especially for my company to start buying pieces of land or leasing um, or in exchange for advertising on Land Hub. Does that make sense? That does make sense. So you're telling me, with billboard rules, as long as they're advertising it on an advertising hub. They can put a billboard up, not a billboard, but a like, like, let's say that you know, dude, Mark, it's just a, a standard real estate sign, right? If right. Re, Remax is listing or century one is listing your property. They can put a four by eight foot sign um, on your property, marketing your property, but they're also branding themselves. I see. I see. So, okay. In this case, this guy's mobile home park isn't on the property. It's down, it's down the way three or four miles. So he has to get a permit to put on his to put up his um, his billboard. Is that tough to get? Yes, very tough. He told me even in a small county, tough to get. Really? How long does it take? What's the cost? You know, it's six months to a year before he'll have his billboard up. So, really? Yeah, and that's and this is a small town, dude. So that doesn't sound good. What about oil and gas leases? You know much about those? Nope, nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Um, I do know that if you have oil or gas on your property, yep. you can lease it. Wow, Mark. That's unbelievable, dude. You know, that's you, one reason why I love podcasting with you is because you enlighten me. I, yeah. I mean, that was that. You're not going to hear anything wiser come wow. out of my mouth. 
Wow. Yeah. There, you know, but there's all these different uh, strategies with oil and gas leases. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start learning more about them, and then I will uh, have something a bit, a bit more insightful to say. I know a lot more. About, I know a lot of obviously about mining leases, um, which I, I would but, assume they're very similar. They are. They are. But they're they're in northern in every every uh, state. The rules are different. Um, what can and can't be separated, how they're separated, etc. But in northern Nevada, I think you can separate just about every right. So mining rights, oil and gas. Um, geothermal, I bought in, in one case, I bought geothermal, uh, rights outright. Um, so there's a lot of assets. No, wait, why would, why would you buy geothermal rights outright? Because what's, a, what's company, the benefit? a company came to me looking to lease the rights. It was a stupid move for me because at the time I didn't know that I'm still paying a royalty based on the rights. So I could have just leased them and had the same effect. Um, but having them, at least if, if, seven years down the line and I want, I mean, if you're leasing something and then nothing happens in two years, you let it go. If you own something, you still have it. So, right. right. And, now, do you, you remember that deal that we did with the geothermal company and the CEO contacted us and he needed an easement through our property? I'll tell you a funny story. Keep going. We, we you remember that deal? I, I you, remember you, it very well. And I just met with him last week. No kidding. Yep. They're still in business. No, they're not. They're not in business. Okay. Well, this is, this is several years ago. These guys contact us and they just want to pay for an easement for our property. Well, easements are like, how much do you get paid for an easement? Probably less than you do for, for grazing rights. You don't get much uh, to grant someone an easement through your property. So I said, no, you can't have an easement. You can buy the property. So we negotiated for not very long. They needed that. They had to have the property to do their project. So I, I wouldn't say, I didn't gouge them. I'll be honest, I really didn't, even though I could have. Um, so, but I made a huge, huge killing on that deal. That's that's pretty funny, Mark. I'll tell you what happened to me, because I, I think that was right around the time you and I um, parted ways for a little while, and, uh, and I went on a hiatus from land for a little while. Right. Um, I, I sold, I sold a, um, an easement. Um, I did not sell the land initially because the property wasn't fully subdivided yet. Okay. So they had to buy an easement for me. So I negotiated an easement with this guy and then I go to the table and this is about, gosh, almost six years ago. Yeah. This is, this is the CEO of a, they went public, a Canadian company, right? A public company. I'm not going to yeah. name names. Yeah. Um, don't name names. Um, so the CEO, um, decides that he's going to, for me, when I'm signing the documents, fly out. I negotiated Mark for an easement of, of like a hundred feet. I negotiated the easement for fifteen thousand dollars. Okay. Okay. And just so you understand, like what what I did. So, so I so which I didn't think was a big deal, right? Like they came at me at seventy five hundred bucks, and I bumped them to fifteen grand. And I said, okay, and the, and the, everything was kosher. We signed the deal. Right. Then the day I go to sign, this guy flies in on his private jet, the CEO, and sits at a board table for me to sign the documents. And he looks at me, my wife is eight months pregnant with my first son. And he says to me, yeah, 15 grand is not, a, it's not going to happen, bro. Oh, mom, that's, that's great. And there's seven people at a board table. I'm in my sweatpants. My wife's not eight months pregnant. And I'm, I'm not a, I mean, I'm a nice guy. Like generally speaking, when it comes to business, I'm a very nice, honest, ethical man. I'm a man that stands by my word. And the guy looks at, looks over at me and he goes, it's just not going to happen. I said, I got a question for you. I said, without my easement, is this your, is your project even viable? And I look over to the, one of the project managers goes, yeah, no, it's not. And I said, great. Hey, you know what, sir? Have a great day. Thank you for your time. We're going to have, we're going to take off. So, <laughs> I love it. My wife looks at me. She's like, holy, that I, she felt the tension in the room. Right. We got up and I walked and then, wait, 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 Drake, come back, come back, come back. Long story short is not only did he pay the 15 grand, but I forced him to buy the property at an astronomical price. Right. And sign the papers right there. Just because he wanted to play, I'm going to fly in my private jet, negotiate over 7,500 bucks, which is probably what the fuel cost me to get there. Right. And, and tell me that he's not going to do a deal. So, yeah, then, he probably looked at you and thought, oh, you know, this, yeah. this young kid in sweatpants and a, and a pregnant wife doesn't know anything. I was 29 years old. I was young. And yes, 
he, that's exactly what he thought. And so funny enough, and I'm, and I'm dumb enough to stick a bunch of money into his company after the fact, because I believe there was a lot of potential and then I lost the money. Um, that all comes full circle. I had a meeting last week with some of the guys that were in that room with me that day. And it just so happens that we may actually be doing business together. So on, on the mining, no, uh, no, on a solar project, on a, a solar, solar project. So, so it's just, it's just very interesting. That's why one thing I always tell people when it comes to business is, 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 is don't sell yourself short. Number one, number two is, you know, have integrity when you do business, be respectful, be honest, be truthful. People will work with you. And these guys, I mean, it's the potential that I have to work with these guys is, is very interesting. It's a, it's a very lucrative deal. Um, that I have right now on the table, which is, which, which is a game changer from an alternative energy perspective, which I didn't have last week. Um, right, right. because he liked me and he knew that I had financing in place for big projects. He came to me and said, listen, I met with him. I stopped by. I hadn't seen him in four years, called him up. Hey, how's it going? He said, I'll oh, come check out the new office. So you've always got to, you know, in business, just generally speaking, have integrity, be honest and truthful. People like to do business with people that do business the right way. They do. Yeah. They do. And we're, we're going to talk a lot about this in Vegas. Vegas is coming up. You mean you're going to talk, Mark? I'm sitting in the back. Duran is going to network. There will be plenty of time to talk to Duran. Plenty of Q&A. But I will be speaking most of the time. <laughs> That's going to be so boring. I'm going to fall. If, if, if everybody gets bored, I'll bring Duran up. I got a but, question but, for you. Did you get my message today by chance that when I called you? Who called? When I called you today, did you get my message? Yeah, yeah. Okay, was that not the, the most beautiful message you'd ever heard? I, don't, you know, don't repeat what happened, but did you was that did you like my idea? It was great. Okay, we're gonna do that at the convention. All right. I I have some good ideas for Mark at the convention. That's gonna that's gonna make everything a lot more enjoyable because Mark is truly the land geek, um, and there's no <laughs> ifs ands or buts about that. Yeah, it's not like I'm giving out blackberries. No. no. All no. right, well, listen. If you haven't signed up for Vegas, it's May thirtieth and thirty first. Get there on the night. That Thursday night, the 29th, we're starting early on the 30th. We're going all day till about 5, 5.30, open bar. We're going to be auctioning off land. If you're there, free piece of land, auctioning off a surface too. Duran's going to be there. Duran, the man. We can talk about mining. I'll have my, I'll have my, security, team. I'll have my security team in place. The security team will be in place. It's going to be a great, great event. And uh, I'm not going to hold anything back. It's going to be fantastic. Even though Duran thinks I'm going to bore everybody to tears, I guarantee I won't. I'm prepared. It's going to be great. So uh, if you haven't gotten your tickets yet, what's that? What's the site to get tickets at? Landconvention.com. Go to landconvention.com. And we're, we're, you know what? We're, we've, get we've, your tickets. Uh, yep. We've, we've, we've lowered prices uh, just for the next couple of days. Um, just kind of a special for our listeners. So if you're interested – Get on there and buy your tickets. All right, great, great. And now it's time to put you on the spot because I oh, love it. Oh, come on, Mark. Come on. Don't do it. Don't do it, Mark. How about you? I'm going to put you on the spot. What's your tip of the week, Mark? I, you're putting me on the spot? You, you gotta, this is my podcast. No, it's not. It's, I, I, I need to put you on the I, spot. I, I hijacked you. I, I can't. This is not going to happen. No. Okay, I've, I've, got, I've, got a good, I've got a good one. So, All right. Are ready for this? Yeah. Okay. So as you guys all know, the con the aspect of contracts is a bit the one of the one of the portion one portion of the 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 land deal that makes it um difficult, right? Having to send out contracts, getting back notarized, that kind of stuff. Um I found that there's a couple things. One is there's a new product by Adobe called EchoSign. That's E C H O S I G N. Yeah, Echosign. yeah, I know EchoSign. You like them better than DocuSign? No, but they're they're a, a different solution. You get two weeks free to try it out. Um, so it's one it's um, it's one place to go. And then there's also another place um, called NotaryCam.com. NotaryCam.com. Let me check it out. NotaryCam allows you to notarize documents online with a camera. No kidding. Dude, don't get excited, Mark. Pedosa. I'm excited. This looks great. Notary Cam allows you to electronic sign documents with live notary. Public Can't in change minutes. Your baby. Instead I of days? Changed. Are you kidding me? I just changed the game with Mark. Wait a second. How is this legal? I've, I, Something I, doesn't look right. Mark, this is my new business, bud. What do you think? 
All right, so this is in, this is, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm investing in this company. Is Notary Cam's online notarization legal? The Commonwealth of Virginia signed the legislation. This groundbreaking legislation authorizes Virginia certified e notaries to legalize, to legalize any document anytime from anywhere via secure remote video audio technology. Wait a second. Look at read the bottom, California. And in California, for example, it's found that any certificate of knowledge taken in another place shall be sufficient in this state if it's taken according to the laws of the place where knowledge is made. Booyah! Oh my gosh, 20 bucks for an electronic Dude. notarization. The game has changed, Mark Padilla. This is a lot less than Notary Pro. The game has changed. I so I just this, is, this can't be right. This is I, the best I, tip. I'm stop the by the way, the podcast is done. Because we're not gonna we're not gonna beat this tip. This is the ultimate tip. When did you find this? Um, this can't I, be right. I started it last year. This is my company. E because I've been I've been complaining about notaries and how we should have e notarize for a long time. These guys found a loophole. They found a loophole, and not only they found a loophole, but I'm gonna see if I can secretly find a way to take them into Land Hub and sort of make them a portion of the contract um, aspect of the site. So, okay, this, this, I'm not even going to do a tip of the week. This is so good. Notarycam.com. Holy so, cow. We're going to Sizzler, baby. Dre, I, I can't, I don't think this is right. This can't be right. It's right, baby. It For 20 right. bucks, they're going to, the live notary, e notary will confirm your ID, e sign your document. Dre, I don't think, I don't think this is going to work right. Because I don't think you can. I don't think the 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 recorder is going to accept an e notary. I'm scared. Be scared, Mark. You, you try it first, and then I'll do it. No, you try it first. I'll try it first, and then I'll get kicked back. You're going to pay me twenty bucks, by the way. If it doesn't work. No way. Fine, fine. I'll do it. Notarycam.com. That's a game changer. I mean, that saves time. That saves money. That's fantastic. Yeah. But it doesn't really, I mean, from our purposes, I don't know though. Like, I'm, you know, why don't I just, I don't know. We'll talk about this more in Vegas. You are baffled and confused, but I love it because I finally got you thinking, buddy. I am baffled and confused, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm loving this right now. Okay. I'll, I'll look more into it, but everybody check out notarycam.com. All right. I think that's a good podcast. What do you think? Are we good? Yeah. You know, I was just thinking, Mark, you know what we should do is create a podcast Facebook page so that our listeners, which just so you all know, the list, like we always check, like not always, but like once every week or two check on, on the listing and, and where, and whether it's improving or declining. And we obviously have continually improved because Mark and I spend way too much giving way too much free information for free, but we want people to engage and interact with us. So maybe we create a Facebook page, Mark. It's all you. I'm, I'm I'm all over it. I love it. You okay. know, you go. You can always go to my Facebook page, uh, the Land Geek. Yeah, but that's bo again boring. It's, it's facebookcom <laughs> the Land Geek. Like the Land Geek. All uh, right. It's funny. So, anyways, it's Mark, I, I I had a question for you, but I just forgot it. Go ahead. All right. Well, listen. <laughs> if you want to learn more, go to www.thelandgeek.com. Download the Passive Income Blueprint. Get the ebook, How to Avoid the Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes. We've got other cool bonuses in there when you register, which I don't want to talk about because they're cool and they're secret and they're bonuses. So do that. And look, if you want to buy some wholesale land, give Duran some love. Go to reserveland.com. Advertise your properties at landhub.com. If Duran doesn't have anything you want, go to frontierpropertiesusa.com. And don't forget to go to landconvention.com. Get your tickets. Duran's discounting them there. Uh, we'll see everybody in Vegas. Duran, you anything start. else get, you want to say? No, just we love we love the listeners. We appreciate all the feedback, and we'll see you in Vegas. Yeah, leave us feedback and uh, let us know if you want to set up a Facebook page on Facebook. All right, we'll see everybody next week. Thanks. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.